Hey, Mike from Prep Pros here, back with another prediction video for the June SAT. I nailed my predictions back in May, but far more importantly, I had a ton of students in my course get near perfect scores on the SAT and absolutely crush the math section on the test, in large part to our new advanced math course. So in today's prediction video, we're gonna focus a lot more on that second harder module where so many students are struggling, but we're gonna cover a little bit of other stuff you're also gonna see on the June SAT. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna go over some recommendations to help you improve your score as quickly as possible heading into test day. Now, the first thing you're definitely gonna see on your SAT, and this is gonna make up about a quarter of your score in the reading and writing modules are essentially grammar questions. These are the questions that ask you about the conventions of standard English. If you know the particular grammar rules, this is one of the easiest parts of reading and writing to score perfectly on. So we're gonna take a look at this first one here. Initially eclipsed by acclaimed works of Galileo Galilei, the scientific contributions of Italian physicist and astronomer Giovanni Battista Ricciola have gained recognition through contemporary historical analysis. This is testing what I call the names rule. The same concept applies if they're talking about paintings or sculptures that I know have also appeared on the test. So what we're gonna look at is that descriptive element before the name or the title of the painting or the sculpture. We have to ask ourselves, could this refer to one thing or more than one thing? While Italian physicist and astronomer, there's more than one Italian physicist and astronomer, therefore this name or this title is considered necessary information. So you don't wanna set it off with any commas and you also do not wanna surround it with commas. So that's where A is our correct answer. One other trick here, your single dash and your colon are identical on the SAT, so you can always eliminate those two answer choices. We're gonna talk about another more advanced grammar rule at the end of the video. So we're gonna start with something that isn't super challenging here. Um, here we have in the equation below, J and K are constants. If the equation has infinitely many solutions for X, what is the value of K? Is always try to solve these on your own before I work through them. Now, the numbers that you're gonna see here for questions that I'm pulling from my math book correspond to the level. And I'm gonna pop up a little bit of information about the leveling system, but essentially, level three are the types of questions that you need to master to move from about a 650 up to a 700 and a little bit above. But here, if we have infinite solutions, what we need to understand is we need to understand if we think about these like a linear expression, we need to have the same slopes and the same y-intercepts on both sides of this equation. So the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and distribute through that J. So this will give us JX minus JK is equal to three quarters X plus 15. So as we just talked about, we know we must have the same slopes. So also our X coefficients, which are gonna be our slopes must be the same. Therefore, we know that J is going to be equal to three quarters. What we also know then is negative JK must be equal to 15 for us to have infinitely many solutions. We can also think infinitely many solutions means these equations must be identical, so they're constantly intersecting. Therefore, we can now say negative JK must equal 15. We know that J is three quarters. So what we now know is negative three quarters times K is equal to 15. So we can divide out that negative three quarters on both sides, that's gonna give us that K is equal to negative 20, and that will give us our correct answer here. Now, the next thing you're gonna see on your SAT are questions that are just testing you on very specific knowledge. The questions may feel nearly impossible to solve, but if you know the rules tested, they're actually quite easy. And this one is around the SAT's favorite trig identity that I'm gonna pop on the screen here. So what we need to understand is if sine of X equals cosine of 90 minus X, that tells us that these angles are complementary, that which means they add up to 90 degrees. So here looks pretty challenging, and I've heard from some students that they've seen questions like this at the end of their first module of math, in the middle of the second module. We simply need to know that tells us, since sine of A equals cosine of B, that these two things add up to 90 degrees. So therefore we can say 2x plus 44 plus 3x plus six is equal to 90, and then we can solve for x pretty easily from there. So as long as we know that specific knowledge, we can work through, and that's why I really grade this as level three. Not nearly as complex as some of the questions we're gonna look at later in the video, but if you don't know the rule, you're gonna be basically kind of completely stumped on solving it. So this will give us that five X plus 50 is equal to 90. This will give us that five X equals 40, and we'll find our correct answer here of X equals eight. Now we're gonna take a look at our first kind of level four question. These are the types of things that you can anticipate from about that 15 to 22 range in your second harder module. And one of the things that they love, love, love to test on are tricky unit conversion questions. These often are around squared or cubed units. 
So here we see a rocket speed is increasing at a rate of 17.8 meters per second squared. Now per is essentially a code word for divided math. So we're going to have our 17.8 meters per, we can just do this as one second squared. Now we want to get this to miles per minute squared. So first thing we can do is we can take care of our meters to mile conversion. So we're going to put our 1609 meters on the denominator and we'll put our one mile on the numerator. Now we've converted it to miles per second squared, but we want to get it to per minute squared. So since we have one second squared on the denominator, we need to get this into minutes squared. So what we know is there's 60 seconds, and I'll just leave it as S so I'm consistent with my units here. There's 60 seconds in one minute. But this is the really important part that trips most stu students up. This is seconds squared, so we need to square this entire conversion factor. And now this will give us our correct answer here. So we're essentially doing 17.8 times 60 to the second, and then we're going to divide all of that by 1609, and that will end up giving us 39.825, but we can only put in these kind of four digits with the decimal place, so our correct answer here would be 39.83. Now the next thing you're going to see on your test are scale factor questions. These have been showing up on pretty much every single digital SAT, so Memorizing this table from my book is really, really important and helpful for you. So here we see rectangular prism A is similar to rectangular prism B where the shortest side of A corresponds to the shortest side of B. The volume of rectangular prism A in cubic meters is 3,402, and the volume of rectangular prism B in cubic meters is 126. The shortest side of prism A is 9. What is the shortest side of prism B? Well, what we need to kind of understand here is we need to figure out that we're dealing with scale factors here. And what we also need to recognize is the volume multiple is our scale factor cubed. So a really simple example, if we had a scale factor of two, that means the volume of the larger shape would be eight times greater than the volume of the smaller shape. So what we wanna do here is we wanna figure out the volume multiple, and then we wanna take the cube root of that, and that will give us our scale factor, and that's what we're gonna to have to use with the nine to, to figure out our correct answer. So here, if we do 3,402 divided by 126, that's going to give us 27. So the big mistake here is this is not our scale factor yet. We need to cube root the 27. That's going to give us that our scale factor is 3. Now, we also have to be careful here. So we know A is the larger shape because it has a volume of 3,402, and B is the smaller. So if the shortest side of A is 9, that means 9 is 3 times greater than the shortest side of B. So we could write this as essentially 3x is equal to 9. That's going to give us that x, or that shortest side of b, is going to be equal to 3. Now the next thing you're going to see on your SAT are what we can think of as essentially fake y-intercept questions. So these are always questions that look very similar to this, and most students end up confidently missing these. So here we see for groups of 50 or more people, an aquarium charges $17 per person for the first 50 people and $12 for each additional person after the 50th person. Which function C gives the total charge in dollars for a group of people where X is greater than or equal to 50? Now, we're not gonna do the technical way kind of by hand because you really shouldn't be doing that. You should just be plugging values in. So the best thing we can always do is solve for the easiest situation where we meet this. So let's just say we're gonna solve for how expensive it is for 51 people. Well, we know for the first 50 people, it's gonna be $17 per person. So that's going to give us 50 times 17. And then it's $12 for each additional person. So we're just going to add 12 to that. Now, the reason we're doing this is we don't want to look at how the SAT is writing the answers because they're intentionally going to write them to try to trip you up. This ends up equaling 862. We want to plug values in and we essentially can fact check this. The wrong answer that almost every student picks is D. But if you plugged in 51 for X here, which is what we have to do, this definitely is not going to give us 862, which we know is the correct value we have to pay when we basically use 51 people. So we just want to go through and check our different answer choices. So we could just start with C here. If 12 times 51 plus 250 equals 862, that gives us the correct answer. So 51 times 12 equals 612 plus 250 equals 862. That's how we can find our correct answer there. 
if you really wanted to, I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it. If you really wanted to do this the technical kind of math teacher way, we would say c of x is equal to 12 times x minus 50, because we have to make sure we aren't double counting for those first 50 people, plus the total of the initial kind of group that we're already counting for, which is the 15 times 17. So we do plus the 17 times 50, and that will end up giving you your correct answer there. So this is the really fancy way if you want to do it that way. I don't recommend doing that. You're far more likely to make a mistake than just picking your own value, solving for it, and checking to see if the answer choices are true given what you found. Now, the next thing you're definitely going to see are some wildly difficult questions if you get into that second harder module. Um, and for that, I don't think there's any better resource than my advanced math course and doing the level four questions in my math book. It's delivered great results, but we're going to kind of break this one down here. So one thing we always want to conceptually do is if we see values like this, the C is our X and the 350 essentially is our Y. So we just want to plug these in. So we're going to have the equation 350 equals A to the 2C minus B and 8 equals A to the C minus B. Now from here, we want to be able to solve for one of these variables. So we want to go ahead and cancel out the Bs. That's going to be easier here. So we can just multiply this whole bottom equation by negative one, and then we can add these two together. So this will give us that 342 equals a to the 2c minus a to the c. Well, this kind of looks a little bit like a quadratic, so we can subtract over the 342, and that will give us that zero equals a to the 2c minus a to the c minus 342. And while this looks something like x squared minus x minus 342. So we just have to go through and understand how to factor this. Well, the way we'd factor this is we would get a to the c minus 19 and a to the c plus 18. Those are going to foil back to give us this. So therefore, a to the c is equal to 19 or a to the c is equal to negative 18 here. Well, what we can see from the behavior of this is this is an increasing exponential function. From C, we get 8. To C, we get 350, so it has to be positive. Well, from here, we're basically home 3. We know A to the C equals 19, so we can just plug that back in, in this expression. So we'll get 8 equals 19 minus B, and that will give us that B equals 11, and that's going to give us our correct answer. If you want more practice with nine other really challenging questions like this, you can check out those in the free trial of my Ultimate SAT course. If you want 150 plus expert level questions like this, check out my advanced math course. Now the last concept that we're going to cover here that you will see on your June SAT are called misplaced modifiers. And then I'm going to talk about some recommendations of things that you should do to help you improve your score as much as possible heading into the June digital SAT. So here we see Known as Earth's living skin, biocrusts are thin layers of soil held together by surface-dwelling microorganisms such as fungi, lichens, and cyanobacteria. Fortifying soil and arid ecosystems against erosion, well, here's our modifier. So whatever comes after it needs to be described as who or what could be fortifying soil and arid ecosystems against erosion. A recent study's estimate can't be doing that. An estimated 60% in global dust emissions can't be doing that. But these crusts that we talked about in the prior sentence, the bio crust, could be fortifying the soil and arid ecosystems against erosion. And a recent study, once again, would not be described by that. So that's why this is called a misplaced modifier, because all the wrong answer choices are going to make that modifier describe the wrong thing here. Now, there's one other grammar concept that you absolutely are going to see on your digital SAT. It's going to be with questions like this. These are sentence structure questions. They're around your ability to identify independent and dependent clauses and understand the rules around connecting them. So make sure you check out the free trial to my ultimate SAT course because you're going to get lessons on that and you're going to get a lot of practice to make sure you can pick those up on test day. Now, a few other recommendations. The June digital SAT is a little bit of a unique one for a school year test because many students have a lot more time on their hands. Some of you are going to be out early. Some of you are going to be done with APs and have no, almost no work at all. So you can often make a huge impact in your score in the last week or week and a half. So if you're just struggling on that harder second module, I strongly recommend checking out my math course or at the bare minimum, the advanced math course, because this is really going to focus on if you're around 700, helping you take that score as high up to a close around 800 as possible. 
and it's worked wonders for some students here. If you are just cramming through and this is one of your first attempts at the SAT and you just want to familiarize yourself with all the easiest places you can improve your score, I'd strongly recommend checking out my crash course. If you guys have any questions at all heading into the test or any questions about any of the content in this video, drop it in the comments below.